We just got back from Austin, Texas, and so many people told us that we had to do this thing called the Austin Eats food truck tour. Priced at around $99, locals told us that this was the best food tour in town and that it was absolutely worth it. So we had to do it, but were those people right? Let's find out. What's good guys, I'm Dave and while I live in Denver, I'm gonna show you everything that we ate on this tour, what it was like, and let you know if it's worth your hard earned money. Also make sure to keep watching because I'm going to add up the cost of all the food that we ate on this tour and then you can decide for yourself. So first things first, the bus for the tour is really nice. It seats around 20 people and your guide will bring a cooler filled with alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks so you'll never go thirsty. You eat a lot of food on this tour so the cooler is actually really great to have and chances are you're going to start the tour off with a drink with your crew when you meet up with them at Carlachi's in East Austin. Eater named the brisket Carlachi as one of the essential dishes that you have to try in Austin and it's named after the Curlins who were formerly of Curlin BBQ fame which was a very popular food truck in Austin. And man, this was a great way to start the tour. I think a lot of people think that this is the best item on the food tour and you start out with it from a can't miss food truck in Austin. Near perfect brisket in a soft bready vessel, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Even though the tour is three hours long, the time really flies by when you're having fun and we are off to La Barbecue, which a lot of people will say is the best barbecue place in Austin. Condé Nast Traveler called this one of the holy grails of the Austin barbecue food scene and many national publications have put some respect on this woman-owned barbecue restaurant's name. And I'm happy to report that the hype is legit. This was some of the best Texas barbecue that I've had in my life and we had people from Texas on our tour and they were really pumped that we were going to La Barbecue. And here's also where you're going to see a lot of the value of the tour kick in because you get to skip the line at La Barbecue and that line gets really long. If you've ever been to Salt Lake or Franklin Barbecue or even Pecan Lodge out in Dallas, you know that the waits for some of these Texas barbecue places can be serious. And La Barbecue isn't big inside, so those lines go from zero to 100 real quick. But because you're on the tour, you get to just walk in, get some brisket, some slaw, and some pickles, and dive right in. This was absolutely up there with some of the best barbecue I've ever had from a legendary Texas barbecue family. Also, don't sleep on the Chipotle slaw if that's part of your tour. It's a nice change of pace from a vinegar-based or a sweeter slaw that you might have somewhere else. You know, you'll love the brisket here, but you will remember the Chipotle slaw. We hopped back on the bus with our new friends from Texas, Oklahoma, and DC, and we landed at Zilker Brewing for some local beers and some handheld food from Spicy Boys, a very popular food truck that's right next door. Zilker Brewing's IPAs have gotten some national recognition and they are great, so if you're a beer person, this will be an awesome stop for you. However, if you don't drink or you're just pacing yourself, there are also non-alcoholic options at this stop. So you can grab a soda or you can get a local ginger beer if you want to try something that feels a little bit more Austin. And then you'll get the signature chicken sandwich from Spicy Boys, which one of the people on our tour accidentally called Hot Men, which was amazing. But you'll also get a nice surprise. They have a roti with yellow curry that almost everyone on the tour loved. I think we can all agree that the chicken sandwich game in the United States has been raised substantially recently. It's really hard to make a standout chicken sandwich, but the warm roti with the yellow curry was a really nice surprise on a Texas food truck tour, and I loved it. This stop at Zilker Brewing was also one of the most fun parts of the tour because we were all sitting together at pretty much a really long table and that doesn't happen at every stop so it's a great time to get to know the other people who are on the tour. So you've got good food, great drinks, and everyone has had some amazing barbecue and other food and it really starts to feel like you're just hanging out with some friends. And then we were off to industry, which is not a normal stop on the tour. There were some logistical things going on, so we ended up there. And I don't think that this was really our favorite place or really the favorite place of anyone on the tour. 
The interior was big, bright, and modern, but the breakfast tacos that we had here were just okay, especially when you compare them to other breakfast tacos that you can get all around Austin. If you or a friend can cook, I actually think that you can make a comparable breakfast taco at home. And this is not to say that it's bad, it's just not that special, and I can almost guarantee that you will have a better breakfast taco while you're in Austin. I did enjoy the change in vibes going from Zilker to this modern, bright restaurant, but the taco just didn't do it for me. We actually had an extra, and there were no takers in the group, and I think that says all that needs to be said. So with our just okay breakfast tacos down the hatch, we walked a short way down the street to go to Dolce Neve for some incredible gelato to end the tour. Dolce Neve has three locations. There are two in Austin and one in Houston, but this is an award-winning Italian gelato shop, and I think almost everyone says that this is the best gelato place in Austin. And I would believe that. It was that good. I've been lucky to go to Italy a few times and eat gelato pretty much every day, and this was probably the best gelato that I've ever had in the United States. It was incredibly smooth with great flavors and you get to choose the flavor that you want here. Even their sherbet, I don't know how they do it, but it was super smooth, just as smooth as its dairy-filled counterparts. It's amazing. These guys have been globally recognized for their gelato and it was nice to end the tour at a place that pretty much everyone will find something that they like because people like ice cream. After everyone finishes their gelato, you'll hop back on the bus and return to home base, so you won't be stranded, don't worry about that. Now, was the tour worth the $99? I would say absolutely, but let's add it up. The Carlacci would have been around $6, La Barbecue would have been probably around $15 to $20 when I include a drink. At Zilker Brewing Company, the couple beers that you get are probably around $10 to $15, depending on what you get. And then the chicken sandwich and the roti from Spicy Boys would run you around 20 bucks. The breakfast taco from Industry, even though not my favorite, it's only around $4. And then the gelato from Dolce Neve, around $5. And then let's add in $10 for tax and tip and maybe five for the drinks that I grabbed from the cooler along the way. And that's around $85 for everything that we ate on the tour. And we had a guide and a bus. However, it's important to remember that doing this would probably take you about two hours longer on your own, and it would be substantially less fun. You skip the line at La Barbecue, which saves you a ton of time. You don't have to drive, you don't have to park, you don't order food or wait for a bill. It's very efficient. You pretty much just go in and out of the bus, eating along the way and repeating. I think that there's a lot of value in that. And of course, you get to see a lot of Austin and learn about why these places matter in the context of the Austin food scene. I think that that's a ton of fun. And you would never meet all the people that you meet on the tour if you were doing this by yourself. Because of that, I think that the tour is not only worth it, it could even be a steal. It starts around 10 a.m. or 10.30, but you'll get plenty of food, so you won't be hungry until dinner time, so it takes care of breakfast and lunch. So many people in Austin told us to take this food tour, and I'm really happy that we listened to the people. If you're coming to Austin for a visit, I would highly recommend it as well. Of course, it's great if you're a foodie, but it's also just a low-stress, fun way to explore Austin and get to know the vibe of the city. If you end up wanting to book this tour for yourself or your family, just remember that it's for ages 15 plus and let them know where you heard about it. In case you're looking for other things to do in other cities or you want to learn about Denver, here are some other videos that I've done recently and I'll catch you over there.